Um, sorry, I don't know exactly when um, we lost you there a moment ago. Um, I know I was talking about crows uh, for a few minutes. I don't know how much t you heard, but basically go Google crows and uh, cats fighting uh, videos. And you'll find these videos of crows that have basically gone and found a cat that they chose to harass to go to the specific spot to meet up with another crow that has found a different cat that they are going to bring to that spot. And they get the cats to scrap and fight for their entertainment, uh, for, for the crow's entertainment, basically. Um, no idea where the heck those crows came up with this from or how, why that's happening. But apparently crows like to, uh, harass cats. And, uh, as a result of that, I now have the, uh, keep thinking, uh, keep picturing in my head, uh, this image of, like, uh, I, you know, hearing somebody rapping on my door and I open the door and I see this, like, uh, crow, like, you know, you better give me the bird seed or I'm going to break your kneecaps. <laughs> you know, Quacker's here, the uh, Canadian goose, his enforcer will uh, break your kneecaps with his wings or something. Like, <laughs> it's just stupid. But as crazy as that is, apparently the crows are that capable. And it, it goes again back to the f simple fact that, that these animals are just far more capable than anybody ever began to guess. And we are just starting to begin to recognize um, just how smart and capable they are. Like. <laughs> um, anyways, as you can see, my baby, oh, sorry guys, um, as you can see, the bubba is still working his way through on this bone, um, <laughs> he's definitely enjoying it, it's amazing, uh, just how, like, I know for a fact that it pretty much doesn't matter what kind of dog you put in front of them. If you put in front of them a bowl of the equivalent of food, of dry kibble, or you put in front of them the equivalent of food of, like, in raw, like, whole, intact, um, original form, um, Every dog in the world is going to pick the, uh, the real food over the kibble any day of the week. <laughs> like, and it's not even, like, in the same ballpark. Like, it's not even the same universe that you have. I can put a bowl of dry food in front of you that is basically equivalent to, like, to basically uh, those sugary dried cereals that you see, uh, breakfast cereals you see. Um, many uh, Western people uh, consuming for their uh, breakfast. Um, yeah, you're a good boy, Benny. Um, but, you know, that at most, you know, might last a few minutes if your dog is a really slow eater. But if you gave them the equivalent in, like, a raw hunk of meat, even if it's not frozen and it's raw and fresh and whatever, like, it'll last 10, 20 times as long, if not longer, as a kibble did. And the dog will infinitely be more satisfied and happy and fulfilled um, from that piece of meat than they would have from the dried kibble. Even if it would have been effectively the same thing 
um, like I, if you had dried down that same hunk of meat kind of thing and made it into kibble form. <laughs> when the meat is dried like that and it's been pelletized, it represents a tiny, tiny fraction of what the actual volume of that food was. And it totally strips away all of the uh, fun they have in eating the food. Like, like it's sort of like if I told you that you could have a choice of having a plate of, pa of spaghetti um, and meatballs, or you can have the same plate of spaghetti and meatballs, however, put through a, um, like, blender or mixer or whatever, um, to, uh, basically a, a paste, um, would you prefer to have a lifetime eating that plate of pasta, or would you prefer to have said plate of pasta in a milkshake form, which you never get to chew, you never get to, uh, you know, swirl on your fork, you never get to, um, do anything but suck it through a straw. You know, most people I know would take the, uh, plate of pasta any day of the week, and I think that same basic concept and rule plays out for dogs just as much and that's one of the major reasons that I uh, I provide a meat, predominantly raw diet um, if you've noticed already that uh, I do have a kibble that I use for like puzzles and games that raw food just doesn't work well in like I can stuff um, say raw meat, the bones in a Kong, but it's kind of hard to stick that in a, um, puzzle like the Star Spinner that I've got on my show, or uh, channel, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I, uh, there's this little puzzle game that basically is in the shape of a, um, star with, um, multiple levels, and each layer spins independently. So the dog can spin it with one layer away so that they can get to the compartment underneath in each of the arms of the star kind of thing. But you could never put like raw food in that. Uh, it just wouldn't work. And then it, it would, I think that game would probably have been one of the easier game, puzzle games to try to clean afterwards. But it still would have been a whole mess that nobody really wants to do. Um, but that you would absolutely have to clean on a regular basis, um, probably every time. So, um, I do, like I said, I do have, a uh, kibble that I do use for those reasons. Um, and as periodic treats and stuff. Um, but I'm not a hundred percent how I feel particularly about the brand. Um, I'm not... I'm on the verge of switching to something else, um, but I haven't decided what I will switch to. And as a result of that, I'm not um, actually showing the brand itself. Uh, i just rather not. Um, I mean, I suppose it's possible that if somebody could go through all my videos and maybe piece together uh, enough information to maybe get the brand name um, if they worked hard, um, maybe, maybe not, I'm not saying for sure, I just g guess it's possible, but I'm not going to deliberately, uh, put the name out there, um, I only will ever put the name out there of a brand that I feel, um, is competent, um, and is a good brand, um, and frankly, I'll, I would probably take down the video of any brand that I had up that I found out at, was uh, not actually um, up to the standards that I thought they were. So, feel free to let me know um, 
that uh, there's some issue that I should be aware of, and I'll definitely look into it. Um, I do care, uh, but at least for the time being, at least until they, the, I feel like the issues and the reasons that I have issues is resolved, I'm not going to show this particular brand on the channel. So just understand that that's why I just use the brand, the generic term kibble for the time being for what exactly I am feeding there. Um, it's not like it's horrible. Like for 99.999% of people, they probably would say that this kibble more than meets any of their personal desires, wants, requirements, um, the dog's desire, etc. Um, generally speaking, um, I have particular issues with the brand, um, from a management level, from a company, like, staff level, not per se at a product level, as a general rule, um, though there have been a couple of incidences in other products, um, where there was issues um, that did become a safety issue because they didn't understand something that they tried to do properly. Um, so I'm not 100% with putting that name out there, I'm just saying. Uh, but anyways, either way, I, like I said, it doesn't matter what the brand of kibble is. Benny, stand up. That's just reminding him that he should stay on his uh, mat area to chew his food. That's why I didn't have to actually really give a command of any form. I just said to let him kind of know, hey, I know you're doing something. And he went, oh yeah, I know. And moved away from what he was doing. That again is just a reflection of the simple comprehension of what he's uh, clearly understanding when responding to vocal commands and um, various language that he's exposed to. Um, one of the things that I do with Benny specifically, um, to let him know when uh, he should be aware that it involves him, um, I'll always say his name and then say what I want, like Benny, S E A T E. Uh, no, uh, I'm tired. Benny, S I A T. Uh, I gotta think. I'm doing it that way so that I don't influence him at this split second. Yeah, let him just eat his food in peace. Um, I've worked very hard, despite the fact that so that despite the fact that he understands language, that it doesn't become problematic. I.e., like. A common known problem is not being able to say the word walk around the dog without them totally freaking out um, and, you know, trying to drag you out to go for an actual W walk. Um, as you can see, Benny doesn't freak out over that word um, because I long ago recognized that, that was could be a problem that developed, sorry guys, and so I... Um, when I was doing his training from the beginning, I made sure that he uh, wouldn't fall victim to that particular common error and common issue. Um, by giving those like bits though, of uh, teaching him that I'm gonna always say his name and then the command kind of thing. Um, and giving him specific cues that tell him when I'm uh, demanding certain things, give him a sense of time, etc. Um, you know, uh, that gives him the ability to start to process and understand all of these things. Like, for example, when I first get a dog into my care, the very, very first meal they get they get given by me um, sitting on the floor beside their bowl of food and 
giving them each piece of food one at a time. Um, sorry guys, doing my best here. Ugh. So anyways, you give um, every single piece of food one at a time by saying, as you give the food and the dog takes it from your hand, saying yes. And periodically, randomly, just pull the food away. And while you're pulling the food away, say no. Good boy, Benny. Just to disarm that I'm not telling him that he did anything wrong. Um, but anyways, yeah, so you teach them the yes and no game um, for the first few days. All the food they get um, is paired up with the, uh, every time they get the food, they hear the word yes. And every time, um, they don't get the food for whatever reason, they hear the word no. You're not trying to be mean, you're not having a fight, you're not angry, you're not upset. You just say no. And pull the food away. Benny? Manners? Thank you. So, yeah. Um, you're not trying to be a bully or try to be mean or hurtful or whatever. It's just yes and no. Good boy, Ben. Um, and after the first few days, uh, you start adding um, when you want them to have the food. Right before they actually get it, you say, take it. And that teaches them that when you say take it, they're supposed to pick it up and put it in their mouth. Um, and so, step by step, with both yes and no and the take it, um, in combination, I'm also, one of the other things I'm doing from day one is that I'm starting to teach them numbers. So, what I do is I start out with by do, counting. Um, so, I'll like say one, two, three, um, and by the time I get to three, it means that uh, he's run out of time, and he has to, uh, like if he hasn't sat down, I'm going to put him in a sit. Um, good boy, it's alright, Ben. <laughs> I'm not actually talking to you. Um, and basically, uh, anyways, so by teaching the one, two, three, um, and, um, showing them repeatedly situations where they see one thing and saying one, and, uh, it's other times where you, they see two things and you say two and you just consistently over and over again every time they uh, when you're training at that point where you have an opportunity like that you, you show them you know, one, two like we even have rotations of a game where we'll take some treats good boy and I'll put one down and I'll say one and then I'll put another down and say two put another down and say three and um whenever I say take it he can have whatever you know three there are or whatever or four there are or whatever kind of thing um and when he takes them I say the number again so between those like few things to teach numbers and uh yes and no and basics like do teaching sit down etc. with hand signals, um, those basic core things allow me to bring him into new situations and teach him whole new other complicated ideas that without those, that kind of uh, foundation would be very very difficult if not impossible to teach the dog in a comprehensive effective way that um, the dog was capable of understanding. So, well, there are ways to do these things. Um, it's not easy at all. Um, and we're just kind of starting to work all these bits and pieces out of for all of this. A good boy. Yeah. Incidentally, 
uh, just so you can see, Benny's almost done now. Um, and it's been about 40 minutes since he started, um, and that's about all that remains left from uh, the hunk of meat you had seen prior. Um, and those are the kind of little bits of bone that I was describing at the beginning that are left over at the end. Um, they, there's still some, uh, uh, soft tissue is still left to the bone pieces. Um, but he's removed the vast majority of soft tissue off of the, uh, bone already. Right now he's just kind of removing the last few scrapes and he'll have just the bone left afterwards. Here, I'll show you a nice close-up help you know what you're dealing with here, of these neck bones. That's just one of the pieces. And that's the other one. So, as you can see, most of the soft tissue has been removed. I would say easily 99999 kind of thing of it has already been removed. And as you can see, he's just working to get every last scrap he can. He'll go back and find all the little scraps and pieces that um, were left behind after he, um, well, he worked on some of the bigger pieces. So, despite the fact that there's a few kind of scraps still remaining, um, he, he'll vacuum those up before long. Good boy. Yeah, is that good? Is that good, Benny? Yeah. You're a good boy. I do have to be really careful how I talk to him. So I don't accidentally give him commands or... Um, that's a good point to make, actually. As you notice, uh, I've got his fresh water there. Hey, Ben? Is that good? Um, and whenever you're giving any kind of treat, uh, whether it's um, a recreational bone or a um, barf bone or a bowl of kibble, you always want to be sure that there's plenty of fresh drinking water for the dog available to consume at the dog's leisure. Obviously, if it's a dried food object, that becomes even more important that they have even more fresh, clean water um, available at all times. Um, but uh, I know I don't always think through and uh, make sure that I... Uh, um, say every time in the videos that you should have a clean water source available but you definitely should Benny come on bring it over thank you good boy um, but it's definitely a fact that you should have uh, plenty of um, uh, clean drinking water access available to the dog at any point um, you know, I'm lucky for Benny in that, one, I can just go into practically any restaurant or fast food place. Benny, manners, get it and put it. Give. Go get it. Thank you. Good boy. Settle. And 
generous. Good boy. I gave the other piece back once he uh, put the, his other piece back on the mat. Um, yeah. To be frank, uh, uh, it's kind of funny that a lot of the communication that does occur between Benny and I, for example, um, is occurring when, despite that no words are actually being spoken and no actual signal being given per se. Um, it's not like, you know, as he starts to probe to the bone, uh, you know, I start to kind of give him more positive affirmation. And so when he picks it up, I reward him greatly. And then, you know, as he starts, you know, like, no, it's just that I calmly and quietly wait. And he knows already that I expect that the bone stays on the mat. And he knows the bone isn't on the mat. And... He knows that um, I've just taken away the other piece and I'm not happy so he's got a pretty good idea in his head that if he goes and picks up that bone and puts it back on the mat that he'll get his other piece back but that the problem is that the other piece is out of bounds not anything to do with the piece that I took away yeah. If he wasn't thinking, if there wasn't an active brain behind, you know, those eyes and that head of his, I can say without question that he wouldn't be able to make those kind of connections. Those would be too difficult, I would say. But the very fact that he can readily and easily recognize that he's lost one of the pieces because he put the other piece out of the way in the wrong place and that he can get his other piece back by bringing the piece that he put out of bounds back in bounds is in and of itself quite amazing but anyways hey Ben are you done yeah so like I said this is Benny's first true point um it's been about 40 50 minutes that he's just kind of worked on these uh, for his first true session of it. And he's left over with these pieces. And to be frank, um, many dogs, many, especially big dogs, unless like you're 100% supervising and you're prepared for the risk and you're willing to do whatever necessary to fix it if something goes wrong, um, and you know your dog is one that's not likely to try to, like, swallow it, um, and gulp it down. I mean, you can take the risk if you want to take that risk, but for most people and most dogs, at this point, you should just take it away and say, okay, well, that was a wonderful treat, I'm moving on now. Um... In terms of the first video, how I was referring to having the dog chew on it for a bit, um, once it gets to this level, I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about the dog chews a piece, like chews a, like a third off of the whole bed, and there's still like two thirds of the original piece there, and then you put that back in the freezer. Not once they chewed it down to this level. Um, realistically, once they chew, they've taken it down to this level. There is a elevated risk for it becoming a choking hazard. And so you really want to carefully think about whether or not that's a risk you are prepared to take. And it's definitely, a, don't, like, don't have any, you know, mix up about it. It is most definitely. Benny, let's go most definitely a risk so please you know be careful anyways we're gonna go you all have a wonderful day benny's uh done his first chew he's just looking for a place to hide these for now so we'll uh have a good day and i'll talk to you later